I'm Ona Lee of Claire's Canning, and today we're making my buttery pan rolls. Cooking and canning with my grandma Clara at her little house in Rural City are some of the best memories I have. And now I'm on a mission to preserve local food systems and traditions. By combining my lifetime of professional culinary and farming experience with generations of knowledge to bring you a fountain of skills and recipes to sustain and pass down. We are getting to the very bottom of food from the ground up, so I hope you'll join us. I think a lot of people are intimidated by making excellent rolls at home, but let me be the one to tell you, you absolutely can. So this holiday, instead of heading to the bakery, let's make pan rolls. First things first, we're gonna combine half a cup of warm water around 110 degrees with our two and a half teaspoons of yeast or one packet, instant dry. And we're just gonna add a little pinch of the sugar. Okay, we're just gonna mix the dry yeast in with the warm water and pinch of sugar. Let that dissolve and begin to foam. While that's working, here I have three cups of Fairhaven Mill organic AP flour and one teaspoon of salt. Instead of using a sifter, I like to just whisk my dry ingredients together. It works just as well, in my humble opinion, at least for bread doughs. To the flour and salt, we can add our quarter cup of sugar. Go ahead and get that whisked in as well. We're gonna add our flour, sugar, salt mixture to the bowl of our mixer and use the hook attachment. Here we have two ounces of butter diced and half a cup of Maishan milk. While the yeast is working, I'm gonna go ahead and melt my half cup of Maishan dairy milk and two ounces of butter. We don't want it to scald or boil, we just want the butter melted. When baking or cooking, I really do think ingredients matter, so I suggest finding good local milks, eggs, flours, whatever you can. And if not, that's okay too. Our yeast is now activated, the butter and the milk are melted together, and we have our dry mixture in the bowl here. So we're gonna get it started on speed one and stream the yeast water mixture in. Next, we're gonna stream the milk and butter. And then we're gonna add the one egg. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna go ahead and scrape all that out. Okay, I'm just gonna take this down and give it a quick little mix and get underneath kind of incorporated. We're just taking the dough in this stage to Shaggy mixed, just mixed. Get that going back on one again. Okay, we're at just mixed. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape my spoon off. Now we're gonna let this dough rest for about eight minutes. That's called an auto lease. It's when the flour starch molecules are hydrating before we fully give it the real mix. So you don't need to cover it or anything. Just set a timer for eight minutes. Do we have a timer? <laughs> what did I do? Okay, our eight minute timer has gone off, so we're gonna get this started on speed one. And we are gonna mix this for about six to seven minutes. And I like to set a timer. You can definitely do it by feel, but I'm feeling the six today. Let's do six minutes and check it after that. Okay, our six minute timer's up. That looks good to me. This is a really wet dough. This is a moist, tender bread. We're just gonna go ahead and give this dough a little bit of a scrape, but we don't need to add any auxiliary butter or oil to this. It'll be just fine. We're gonna cover it and let this rise or proof for at least 30 minutes or until it's doubled in size. The most important thing with bread is proper proofing, pretty much no matter what type of bread you're making. So don't be skimpy on this step. So our dough has had ample time to proof. It is now a little more than double in size and that's cool. Okay, so we have a big skillet and we've got some butter. I'm just going to get that rubbed in there because y'all know me, more butter the merrier. <laughs> no, but for real, butter your skillets. Don't use oil. This is part of the magic. 
And I don't know what it is. It's like melted butter does not do the same thing as butter that you rub in. There's something about it that just is necessary. Okay, we have got this pan really well buttered up and you do not use flour with this dough. If it's sticking to your hands at all, first of all, it shouldn't. But second of all, if it does, use butter. And if you really must, maybe a little olive oil. But that dough has really nicely come together. It's got a beautiful elasticity and supple texture. If you have a kitchen scale with grams, I recommend weighing the entire amount of dough. We have, right now it says 788, but I bet we can make that an even 800. Hmm. Oh, 801. I'm gonna have to take... There we go, even 800. <laughs> what is 800 divided by? 12, 66 grams each. My general rule of thumb for dinner rolls, the size is between 50 and 70 grams of dough each. If I'm using these for burger buns, I do more like 90 to 100 grams each. So one batch will easily make 12 dinner rolls or about six to eight burger buns. It always takes a minute to get the first there we go, 66. So all we do is punch the dough in the center and fold over and then you grab it. And this is how my grandma formed rolls. As long as you have like a real nice, tight little dumpling, that's all good with me. Clara's rolls are one of the most important food memories in my entire family. <laughs> She could just crank them out. She never used a scale. They were all absolutely perfect and exactly the same. There's just something so special. People's faces light up when they know that you've made bread. I might be autopiloting here. My spacing I think is off. Cause they're gonna proof up a bit. They're gonna get really big. So we wanna give them a little bit of space in between cause they will end up touching anyways, but there we go, that's more like it. And that looks good to me. So now these need to proof again for another 30 minutes or so until they're at least double in size. I'm gonna set these somewhere warm. My pot's going right here, so that's a perfect place for bread to rise. Our rolls are proofed. It's time to egg wash them and get them in the oven. If you don't have a pastry brush handy, I have a little trick because I have many, yet I am constantly misplacing them. So here's what I do. I take a little paper towel, fold it in half, fold it in half again. And then you're gonna roll it up and you're gonna twist it. So then I'm just gonna cut little bristles, quote unquote. I don't think you necessarily have to do this. It will work just the same, but I kind of like to. And then I just keep twisting. And there we go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and egg wash these. I have egg washed trays and trays of pastries in a Michelin star New York City restaurant with a brush just like this. Uh, but I don't know why, but when I was working at the Spotted Pig, the pastry brushes were just always disappearing because supplies were so tight. There's so many people working there. It's so busy. It's so crazy. So you know what? I came up with my own way. No desperation over here. Anyways, ta-da. So now we're gonna get these in a preheated 350 degree oven for 18 minutes to start and then we'll take a little look-see and we should rotate them about halfway through. Our rolls are fresh out of the oven. So the final step here is to brush the tops as they're hot with some butter. This step to me is not optional, but I also like to be a little reckless with my butter garnishing. So I'm also going to be sticking a little bit in the crevices of each one of these rolls. And then we're gonna garnish the top with a little bit of gorgeous flaky Malden sea salt. I guess this part is optional, but in my opinion, this is really what makes them shine. Once you get these down, there's absolutely nothing that compares to the rolls you can pull out of your own home oven. Bakers don't come for me, but you know it's true. This just came out and it, ah.
Come on. I eat these all the time. I make these at least every other week in my own home and, and I'm still dying to try it. Oh yeah. <laughs> like and subscribe.